historic moment between India and China. I stress the need for China to reconsider its approach on some of the issues that hold us back. To Ming Da, Ching Hwa Ta Shui. Neither side knows where the line of actual control is in this area. That is why I have proposed resume the process of clarifying it. Good evening, welcome to the Buck Stops here. I'm Vishnu Shom. On the program this evening, as India and China signed several agreements, we look at the real story of the visit of the Prime Minister and ask, beyond the optics, is Prime Minister Modi's visit genuinely a new milestone? Or is it a feel-good summit high on atmospherics and low on substance? Also on the show this evening, after a Supreme Court directive, the CBI clamps down on a man who had uploaded videos of Indian women being raped on social networking sites. Now, we've been closely tracking the work of the activist Sunita Krishnan and her Shame the Rapist campaign. She joins us in half an hour as we look at the larger issues here, the sick minds that don't not only film gang rapes, but upload them for perverse thrills and sheer commerce. Can these crimes on social media be effectively stopped? That's what we'll also be looking at this evening. But first, our top story. Yes, India and China will work towards strengthening our economic ties. But if there was an expectation that this visit of the Prime Minister would redefine our equation with China and perhaps move towards a resolution of the boundary dispute, well, that isn't where we are as yet. If there was a breakthrough, it was a somewhat unexpected announcement that Chinese nationals looking to travel to India would get e-visas, which will simplify their entry to India greatly. So we have decided to extend electronic tourist visa to Chinese nationals. We are also... A big announcement by Prime Minister Narendra Modi at a university in Beijing, e-visas for Chinese tourists, which will simplify the procedure. The Prime Minister overruling the concerns of the security establishment in Delhi. Earlier, there was pomp, ceremony and hard talk with both leaders acknowledging the difficulties in the relationship and this pointed statement from the Indian Prime Minister. I stress the need for China to reconsider its approach on some of the issues that hold us back from realizing full potential of our partnership. The reference was to the issues of stapled visas and Chinese investments in POK, which sources say was raised in both Modi's meetings with the President and the Premier. Well, the groundwork for the discussions today was laid by Prime Minister Modi's meeting with President Xi in Xi'an yesterday. And the focus really largely is on how the two countries can work together economically, how they can bridge the trade deficit which is so skewed in favor of China. Both sides hoping that they can work on the contentious issues like the boundary on one hand, but also try to move forward with the relationship in other areas as well. And so the economic task force has been set up for the first time between the two sides which will look at the growing trade deficit and areas like manufacturing, agriculture and more. President Xi and Premier Li were very receptive to the specific concerns I had raised on our growing trade deficit. Prime Minister Modi also reiterated the need to clarify the line of actual control as both sides agreed to expand the number of border personnel meeting points and meet more often. The other big outcome, for the first time China has taken note of India's aspirations to join the nuclear suppliers group in the joint statement. 
Both leaders spoke about the difficulties in the relationship and the Prime Minister making it clear that he raised issues with China that he believed they needed to change their approach to in order to improve relations with India. A clear reference to its policies with Pakistan, a clear reference to the staple visas issue that was brought up in the meetings with President Xi yesterday and the meetings today. The real test for the India-China relationship now will be to see how they're able to implement the various agreements on the ground and how they can transform economic ties between the two countries. At the Great Hall of the People in Beijing with Kanan Patra, Nidhi Razdan for NDTV. So beyond the optics, the atmospherics, what exactly have India and China been able to achieve in this visit? That's what we're looking at this evening. Nalin Kohli, spokesperson of the BJP, joins us. Ajoy Kumar of the Congress Party. Sanjay Bharu also with us. Mohan Guruswamy in the studio with us. General Syed Atta Hussain, former Corps Commander and J uh, Mrs. G. Parthasarthi, former diplomat, all with us. Let me come to you first, Nalin Kohli, to ask you this. Uh, no one really expected this e-visa thing to come through. It has happened now. But to many people, it seems that that is the only real takeaway. This is not a transformative visit of the Prime Minister, is it? Well, perhaps those who are feeling disappointed are used to going into a mall or a store and picking up things and paying it with a credit card or cash at the end of the transaction. This has to do with relationships between countries. You're talking of substantive issues which obviously have a history behind them and a complex relationship that we are all aware of. And uh, you need to move in that direction. So if you don't even start applying your mind to it, you do not even state what is important to you and thereafter work towards achieving that I don't think one gets anywhere. Nalin, and in Nalin, relationships, every there are single house, government, but if there's no movement, in every that, what single would we government for for decades on end have said the same thing. We have a certain set of objectives. We are working towards those objectives. We need to clarify where the LAC is. We need to solve what the boundary issue is. We need to improve tie, uh, economic ties with China. Is there anything new and refreshingly different of this particular visit other than e visas? Okay. Besa, uh, Vishnu, for a second, I have a personal request. The audio is really low. So okay, I'm unable, I'll, I'll I, fix I that. I have to fail I'll to understand that. what you're saying, or I'll have to put the TV on. So, yeah, thank you. So, let's come back to the point that you're saying, that every government has said so. Sure. So, uh, I, we had a prime minister who said that we are nationalizing banks for the poor. Did we open accounts for them? It was done in six months. Fifteen crore accounts were opened. So, therefore, the statement of intent also has to translate into action. And that is the differentiator between government to government. The continuity that is there in policy would be seen at an executive level because officers serve longer than the tenure of a government. But beyond that, what you have is the political leadership working to deliver it. And that's the differentiator. Okay, so as far as I see it, I see it substantive for many reasons. A, A, openly articulating what are our concerns. We are not shy about it. We are not apologetic about it. Two, Acknowledging there is a problem and saying we need to resolve or it. Or Now, whether it's resolved or not, only time would answer. Okay, all right. Uh, Ajay Kumar, he, uh, Nalin, makes, a, Nal, Nalin makes an important point when he says that, look, this is a strong government over here. There is a political intent to act. And therefore, there will be action on the basis of what has been announced this time around. What's wrong with that? You know... Uh, Vishnu, this is a government which claims to operate by, de uh, you know, by deadlines and it operates by headlines. I no, no, but that, but about, I'm sorry, you, you just gave us a headline by saying that. And that. I mean, that, that, that no, just, no, no, that's just a cliche right off let the let top. Let me complete. You, 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 no, no, you operate, you claim to operate by deadlines and you always are only focused on the headlines. Let's go. Even the mall environment is your histrionics. The creation of, you know, foreign policy visits with so much of drama and then saying no expectations. The couple of things, e-visa also, which they are harping upon, Arunachal Pradesh, people are still having staple visas. Why are we giving every time we go and, you know, keep uh, giving favors to the other side? And the question is, even if you look at those 24 memorandums, it are all statements of intent. Then you say 60,000 crores, 20,000 crores, the Prime Minister has been Vishnu in so many visits. Let the government say what actually has happened on the ground. So there so should be no gesture of, from India. You know, the there should be no I'll progressive answer that. gesture from India at all. I'll answer that. No, once, no the, what the question is, Vishnu. I'll answer that. That there are four main issues. There were four main issues. The Brahmaputra River, diversion of water. We don't know where that stands. 
the line of actual control discussion, they're claiming, uh, claiming that there was some progress. The staple visa, visa issue, which continues to dog us and which is, an, uh, which is a problem. The sources leak says that they have discussed it on the park-occupied park Kashmir. So there is no official confirmation. There is only no, some time every time the Bhartiya Janta Party no, government no, says there the source been source, state. Very strong, credible, source-based information saying that this issue has been discussed. No, but my question is... May I? No, but the question May is... May I come in for again, a minute? What One I'm moment, Nalin. Vishnu is... Yeah, Vishnu is... Uh, Nalin, let me complete my point. The question is, you have six, seven cities saying sister status. You are saying 24 memorandum of settled, uh, you know, agreements made. We will cooperate in science. We will cooperate in in uh, earthquake studies, etc., etc. Those are fine. I think every heads of, you know, heads of government, heads of state have those discussions. The four critical issues, especially the Brahmaputra issue, the Arunachal okay. Pradesh issue. All right. Nalin, before I go across time. to my other panelists, just quickly respond to that. The key issues have remained unaddressed. Of course, I mean, coming from an extremely dynamic government that we replaced, which brought India to great glory, both nationally and internationally, over the 10 years that they provided the lack of governance, certainly we can't set those standards. Glory, we will keep ourselves focused on the work that, that needs to be done. Yet. We, well, well, Ajay, see, that's the point. You want me to keep quiet when you are speaking, and when I speak and no, say something, ahead, okay. you get defensive. Nalan, please go ahead, please Fair go enough. Ahead. I can understand no, why no, you're no, defensive. Ahead, Let me finish my point. You may no, not no, have a you may ahead, have a Nalan, viewpoint I, after I, that. I it's okay. Please you can ahead. disagree. So therefore, Nalan, as far as we are concerned, as far as we are concerned, we no, that's okay. That's okay, Ajay. Why? We no apologies needed. So as far as we are concerned, we feel it's a substantive view. Let us see. Our Prime Minister has gone there, said many things. So what translates onto ground? We are hopeful it would come. Rest we will allow the people of India to judge right, us. We will enough. also face the elections. Mohan Guru Swami, uh, there was a sense that given the, the, the zeal and the effort that this Prime Minister approaches his foreign policy agenda, we've seen a great deal of work, for example, with Japan, a great deal of work with the United States, uh, substantial work with Sri Lanka, and there was an expectation that this particular visit would be transformative. The bottom line, in our lifetimes, will we ever see some sort of change as far as the LSE and boundary issue is concerned? After this visit, nothing has happened. I think it's been a good visit. We must give him credit for that. He's handled things well. He's handled the foreign policy issues quite well. And with China, he has made some progress. You know, we put... He's made the boundary issue with a centerpiece, put it on the table, saying that we have to get a solution on the LDC. There was never, never this urgency before. So both okay. sides have said there no, have been no, dozens of no, meetings. No, no, there have been dozens of meetings, but he has said that this is important, that you must understand this. So he this has just stated no, no, the important no, of what he, we know. But you know, this, this takes time. You're not going to go there and in, in two days sign an agreement. No, no, I'm you just know. trying to, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt yeah. you, but I'm just making one simple point over here. There have been dozens of meetings. There has been a statement of intent from successive governments. This is a prime minister who says he believes in action, he will get the job done. Okay, I'll, Maybe I'll, he couldn't have gotten I'll, it done I'll, in the three-day visit over he, here, he, he, but he, has there been any transformative he said, statement? He, he said something very interesting, yes. which is that we must have a sense of history, a sense of the future, and you know we have to strategize this together as to the rise of Asia, our relationships with Every Prime Minister yeah. said that. No, he is not, no, no, he is... The rise of Asia and is, India from Deng said, Xiaoping no, onwards, he has, everybody has said He has that. spoken of an India-China economic engagement, which will take us to that, okay? So that is important. And he is really talking, what does he want from China? Is the border question so important? Is it he, not? No, no, I am asking you. Our, our present situation, we need Chinese investment is a number one priority. And he's moving towards that. Another thing, he's trying to create the, the situation so that Chinese investment will come into So are you trying to suggest that it's an either or? No, it's not an either. I'm not. China, I'm not. China. I'm not. Okay. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm very clearly not. Okay. But you know, there are two issues out here. Yes. There's a territorial issue. Yes. China claims Arunachal Pradesh. Mm -hmm. We claim Aksai Chin. You see, both countries are not going to give. Okay. And there's an LSE issue which we can solve. I think it will take a few years to solve, but we are moving towards that. So we have moving? To, no, no. But what have previous government... Have we, no, nobody no, has achieved no, 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 no. Have we, are we in a position... The Chinese have offered us three times in the past a status quo solution. Saying that you keep what you got, we keep. Are we ready to accept? No. no then 
Where is the ball then? No, but where is the thinking to, towards finding a solution despite you know, what remains find a, a domestic, roadblock? We have to find a domestic... So a domestic constituency is missing, therefore there can be find, no forward movement find, either from the part no, of China or from find, India. We have to find a domestic consensus. You saw a bit of the domestic consensus earlier in this show today. Where, how are we going to arrive at this? Ambassador Patrasati, you, you see, what's the takeaway for you from this visit? Having served in every Indian government from Jawaharlal Nehru to uh, Atal Bihari Vajpayee, despite all these arguments on TV, I think foreign policy proceeds on a broad national consensus. Mm. So yes, they can argue with the spokesman on TV, but this is the re reality. Things move forward at a certain pace. We didn't have a summit till between 1953 and 1988, and that process started with Rajiv Gandhi's visit. Yes. I was there. I, I went for that visit. And successive prime ministers have carried this forward. Right now, there are certain issues you have to live with and you'll have to manage which you can't resolve. This sometimes takes generations. Relations between nations are not a one-shot affair where two leaders meet and resolve everything. You manage it. It's when been generations, sir. Uh, well, uh, uh, it, I said generations. It depends, it, it depends it, I, on I, I, how, how I, one calculates uh, uh, generations. Uh, some would you are, say you are arguing like a politician now. Yeah. Right? <laughs> the fact of the matter is that it takes generations. I'll say Lorraine took 400 years to solve. So, okay, so that's. The, so, what I'm saying is, in the meantime, you, as, he, as uh, Guru says, you have to manage it in a way there are no tensions, okay? Now, so there's what, not been a bullet which has been fired in 25 years, so it's being no, managed. No, no, that is not that is not the issue. The issue is when people start, troops start facing each other off, it can Absolutely. escalate any time. And don't say that it hasn't happened. It happened. You're in Sumdha wrong Chu, it happened. Absolutely. In, in no, no, it happened recently. It, 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 it happened recently. It there's a video that was, in yeah, fact, yes. uh, waited. So, so you're contradicting yourself. <laughs> now let me complete. You are behaving like some other bankers. Yeah. I know of. <coughs> now, the uh, fact that, of the... That's truly frightening. The, the fact of the matter is that we, the, uh, that the, he has made certain uh, significant statements. One, he has said, let us not do things which cause uh, problems in the relationship, very clearly referring to stapled visas, very clearly referring to Arunachal Pradesh. He has said, let us not have relationships with third countries which complicate matters. This is the first time an Indian Prime Minister has told China that your relationship with Pakistan can complicate matters. The third point uh, uh, which, uh, which uh, he has made uh, uh, during the course of this is the source of terrorism is in our region, yeah. don't forget it. So I think, you know, uh, every, like my, Dr. Manmohan Singh, 2005 produced some excellent principles for resolving the border. He couldn't do it in 2006, 2007. Now these politicians are going to argue with each other why they couldn't do it. The fact of the matter is, let us recognize national issues and we have a mature polity where these things have been resolved right, by consensus. You know, you raised an important point, General. I wanted to bring you in over here. You know, when it comes to uh, the LAC tensions between Indian positions and Chinese positions, it's actually quite frightening. It ultimately boils down to 20-something soldiers on either side deciding to keep their calm and not get into physical fisticuffs sort of situations. We, there have been videos which have appeared last year of, of Chinese pushing our posts, we pushing them back physically. That is the situation on the line of control. It doesn't take very much for this to escalate into some sort of regional issue over there. That being the case, wouldn't it have been more prudent if there was something to at least de-escalate some of these tensions which do exist on the line of control? Uh, a good question, no doubt, Vishnu. But uh, let, let, me, let me endorse what Mr. Patasati has said to some extent. Uh, firstly, I don't think this government had any intent of, of looking at any specifics at all during this visit. It's been eight months since the visit of the Chinese president to India. It's a work in progress which is going on. And I don't think anyone expected the kind of specific takeaways from here. But the specific issue which you have raised is an important one. Uh, come the summer, and you may very well find the Dipsang Plateau or Chumar or someplace once again getting a little active. And it's a question of 20, 30 soldiers facing each other. We are, we are always reminded of what happened 45, 50 years ago at uh, Natula. Yeah. We are reminded of what happened at Sumdrongchu. Mm -hmm. These are dangerous situations, no doubt. But I think these can be resolved better at the tactical operational level in our border protocol meetings that we have. I think for this to be spoken about 
to be discussed and sensitized at the strategic level, at the national level, really doesn't, uh, is not really desired okay. as such. I think there is a border protocol agreement, uh, 2013. We are having our six-monthly discussions uh, in, in uh, Arunachal. We are having it in, in, uh, in Ladakh. That's enough to keep things in down for the moment. I think, I, I'm, I'm fairly confident that we can carry this through. Because, you see, our, after all, everyone agrees to one aspect, that there's a need for stable borders. Yes. There will be tactical irritants from time to time. Yes. These tactical irritants have to be managed. Yes. I'm sure these can be managed at the ground level. Okay. Uh, Narin, let me ask you this. Again, at a broader strategic level, China uh, is now increasingly a player in the maritime domain. They have e enormous maritime disputes with a host of nations in the South China Seas. There are Chinese submarines now operating, nuclear submarines, apparently on anti-piracy missions in the Indian Ocean. No one uses nuclear submarines to fight pirates. Uh, they have a presence over here. They have a very close relationship with, uh, with Pakistan as well. Therefore, as we talk about making peace with China, talking peace with China, is it not imperative that our larger concern should remain the national security concern, that there may be atmospherics being played out now in China, at the end of the day, they are a security threat for us. <clears throat> well, I think, Vishnu, in terms of, I'm not a career diplomat, like you've got on uh, the panel, but certainly a few points do come to mind, that relationships between countries do not necessarily translate in any country giving up what's strategically important to them, or giving up what uh, they stand for. It's about building an area of mutuality. It's not about, you know, divorcing yourself from your own uh, interests. So I think that's where it is. Of course, there are contradictions. There are contradictions in every relationship. There are complexities there. The question is, how do you manage these contradictions, complexities, and reach a level where you can engage, even for mutual benefit? Okay. And therefore, I don't see these all interrelated. The fact that you've got a full majority government You've had uh, the prior Chinese president visit here, now the Indian prime minister there. These are important developments. And as uh, Ambassador Parthasati pointed out, they may take generations. They could take generations. Okay. They may take hundreds of years. They may also be just within five years. Okay. And a, a humble request to Ambassador Parthasati mm -hmm. for his, uh, you know, with humility I'd like to say, Perhaps he may want to not use the word politician, almost as if it sounds I, I, like an outcast. I, 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 I After regret, all, it is I a full-time politician who is leading the country. Taken back, Nalin. Taken back. Well, you were calling me a politician, uh, Ambassador <laughs> Nalin. He Thank wasn't you, targeting you for, for once. All right. Uh, Sanjay Baru, I'm exactly so sorry I've kept I you waiting. We had some problems with the you, line Ambassador. a little earlier on. Sanjay Baru, give us your assessment uh, of this visit. We are talking about a great dynamic developing, hopefully, between India and China at the same time. They've got the Xinjiang uh, Gwadar link right now. There is an economic link. Their, uh, their belief that Pakistan is their strongest regional partner is perhaps far supersede, supersedes what they see with India in the immediate run. That's a reality we have to live with. Let's not expect any fundamental change to that. You're right. So what did you expect? I didn't expect anything, sir. Did you? No, I mean... <laughs> You know, you're behaving as if there was going to be a magic wand and suddenly... I'm not sure, sir. I, I, just, I, I just feel uh, that look, government after understand. government has spoken about taking no, no, this relationship forward. At the end of this, we have seen atmospherics, we have seen cultural exchanges, we have seen statements of intent. Is, there, are we, is this therefore, like every other visit we have seen in the past so many decades? What have you seen? I mean, were you sitting in those rooms where the President Xi Jinping and Narendra Modi spoke for 90 minutes one-on-one, -on -one, that too under a tree, where uh, Lake, Lake Chiang and the Prime Minister spoke, how do we know what they spoke? So what is there, what you see on television is the show, because that is what governments want to show to their people, that, you know, things are uh, hunky-dory, relationship is good, visit was a success. That's the PR part of the visit, and that's exactly what television will show. Because that's what governments would want you to show. And if you think that was the net result of a bilateral visit, I mean, that, that, that's not what bilateral visits are about. They are about substantial conversations. And the joint statement is the indicator of the nature of those conversations. What are the issues that went into that joint statement? What are the issues that did not go into the joint statement? This discussion should be about substantial issues. 
not about atmospherics and you know body language and you know that's, well, that's what we are trying to do this we, we are an, trying to no, go sorry, beyond the atmospherics that, i am sorry vishnu you listen to me now that this this visit was important because it comes on the back of several bilateral conversations between the leaders of the two most important asian nations india and china are two very important countries when the leaders of these countries meet they do engage in substantial conversations i'm pretty sure they spoke about afghanistan i'm pretty sure they spoke about pakistan there is in fact reference to terrorism in the joint statement explicit references to terrorism and sources of terrorism in our neighborhood yes. these are important statements there was no reference to the silk route which itself the absence of which is an interesting fact then there are substantial references to convergence of thinking on climate change on trade on bilateral uh, you know exchanges you know so it's actually if you look at the joint statement it tells you that this conversation has now become much more sophisticated much more wide ranging the chinese are willing to talk to us as an asian power not just another neighbor you know so don't you know get obsessed about it's all about histrionics it's all about uh, photo opportunity this was a substantial visit ajay kumar do you see and this as a substantial visit all we can get information from are the press conferences the the, the joint declarations and statements which don't seem to have indicated obviously what happened behind the scenes so we can only speculate and hope that something more substantial did happen be, be behind the scenes but do you see this the this joint particular trip Ma, do you sorry, see this Mr. one, 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 one moment mr baru the joint Ajay kumar do you see no, this sorry wait a minute no, no one minute mr baru just hold on sir you the, made your point i'm statement. trying to ask ajay kumar no, no, a point not, you, to respond to what no, you're saying you, you, ajay kumar do you see this visit i'm saying the as, joint as a statement success? is the statement please you read know, the joint statement i've read the joint statement sir which is why i'm asking you but yeah. then how but ajay kumar why didn't you go ahead why yeah go ahead yes ajay kumar yes so vishnu so vishnu vishnu no neither was mr sanjay baru in that uh, room with mr uh, with the president of china or the prime minister of china so mr baru no, making there, those extra positions is very interest no so mr baru can no i speak because you know, you i'm interpreting the joint statement that, no the point is mr I'm baru you're interpreting you the joint to hear statement your own voice i mean could you no no mr baru oh. you want to hear your own voice could you could you let others speak we heard you patiently so i would request you to hear us patiently go ahead you are extrapolating and you seem to you as you are extrapolating as if you were in that room so what what anybody can comment is what's available and you seem to say that the joint statement is there so much of intent so much of histrionics obviously before the visit and any visit of a the prime minister going to china so much of so much was made about it so it's logical for the country to believe that something substantial is going to happen now coming to the point the issues which are critical for india from an indian perspective is the diversion of brahmaputra river that was not in the joint statement that is very critically important for the country there is no mention of it the stapling of visa there is no which is very sensitive issue that there is no mention of it investments there is no clarity so the question is i you you are also swing i mean i would definitely say that sir your conclusions are swinging to the extreme as far as the national interest is concerned it is on brahmaputra water diversion status of arunachal pradesh investments of uh, investments of pakistan investment in park occupied okay. kashmir so how do you say that so we would i would be very skeptical on saying that okay that you so you are skeptical uh, on, you know saying you are skeptical dr baru is less skeptical you had a point to make sir mohan guru swami had a point to make go ahead sir you you raised this diversion of the of the waters of the brahmaputra again and again first of all 90% of the water accumulates at the great bend after the river begins to enter india okay and we don't tap that water at all the river in china in in tibet the sangpo is a small stream and the chinese are entitled as a upper riparian state to have run of the river projects yes yes we have run of river projects on jhelum and the pakistan is making noise and we are behaving just like pakistanis when it comes to uh, <coughs> run of the river projects upstream now there is issue of data sharing vishnu i need to move so there is something and brahmo nalin i'll come to you in half there is issue please. of data sharing which on this visit there has been a breakthrough on that and the, the chinese said we will share data real time data yes. with you on the rivers so you know don't raise a bogey of word which doesn't exist there is no question of diversion even the chinese with all their engineering prowess can't divert the brahmaputra the sangpo is 4 kilometers deep 
and nobody has even forded that river. Okay, Nalin, you have to leave us. Go ahead with the point that you're making. Uh, the skepticism which the Congress sort of treats this visit with, I think you disagree completely. Yes, Nalin, go ahead. <clears throat> that's okay. No, no, that's okay. The Congress is entitled to its skepticism. I mean, we have a different approach to foreign policy. They have an approach to foreign travels and visits, which is completely different to the approach of the BJP. So it's okay. We differ on how foreign visits should be and for what reasons. Now, let's go back to some of the points here. I would feel that, you know, in diplomacy, and I said it at the beginning, none of us, neither Ajoy nor me, are career diplomats. So therefore, there is a lot of fine print that it goes beyond what people are, who are not trained for it may not see. And at least, Mr. Baru was pointing out, Mr. Parthasarthi was pointing out, indications of what was said without it being explicitly said. Well, I only go back to an old adage that someone once said, that, you know, in diplomacy, you may call a person open-minded when you may mean he has no brains in his head. So, I mean, let's read also the fine print and leave it to the experts who do it. As far as we are concerned, we see it as a substantive visit. The Congress may or may not agree on it. All right. Uh, well, General, is this, has, to, to your mind, is this a visit that has transformed Thank anything you. substantial? How, 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 how have we gone forward? The statements of intent are always there. Why is this it's a certainly, of what was certainly economically, yes, there are some strong statements. It's a question of what was expected. You see, uh, unlike previous visits, perhaps, there wasn't too much of a hype, if you really see, there wasn't too much of a hype created about this visit, and rightfully so. Because as I said earlier, I think an eight-month interval between a visit of the Chinese president to India and a reciprocal visit isn't too much. No, so it short. is yes. work in progress which is going on. Mm -hmm. Having said that, uh, I'm sure uh, the Prime Minister, in his deliberations with the Chinese President, and uh, we can only speculate, must have brought in all the substantive issues, primarily the concerns about the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, this $46 billion investment which is there, which we are not sure is ultimately going to come about or not. But our, ex uh, our concerns about it would have definitely been expressed. Our concerns about various other issues on the border protocols itself, I'm sure these issues would have been discussed. It may not emerge in, um, f in the form of uh, takeaways at the end or joint statements, etc. But I'm so sure that 90 minutes... I, I have got full hope. Okay. I'm, very, I'm very hopeful that uh, this has been a good visit. All right. Well, let us hope that this, uh, this actually does translate into something which we haven't read or heard about as yet. I'd like to thank all of you very much for joining us this evening. The visit of the Prime Minister has not ended. There is a very important business end of this visit that takes place in Shanghai. We'll be bringing you the very latest on that. It's time now for us to take a short break. There's a lot more coming up. Do stay tuned. This is the historic moment between India and China. I stress the need for China to reconsider its approach on some of the issues that hold us back. Neither side knows where the line of actual control is in this area. That is why I have proposed resume the process of clarifying it.